Hey everybody, I'm going to kind of show you how to do retargeting in Elden Ring. Uh, this video is just going to be for Elden Ring. Um, however, some of these techniques will translate to the other fun software games. Um, there's going to be a couple of things you'll need. This is the first thing I should tell you right off the bat. Is you're going to need Dark Souls Animation Studio, 3ds Max, Blender, the Vococo plugin for Blender, Havoc Content Tools, and you'll need Yabber as well. I'm going to link all the free tools in the description below. And if you have any questions about the more expensive software, you are more than welcome to message, message me on Discord. And I'll see what I can do to help you out. Um, first things first, before you open any of this software, is assuming you already have Mod Engine, we're going to use Mod Engine to host all the files that we're going to work with. Today, we're going to try to retarget a CleanBot Knights animation onto the player. And we're going to replace a player animation. Um, doesn't really matter which one, it's entirely up to you. Um, what I like to do is I like to refer to all these animation IDs and just kind of pick something. Um, something like, I don't know, let's do vacuum slice, uh, A668. So that's what we're going to think about for now. First thing is, Open uh, Dark Souls Animation Studio and also make sure in your mod engine folder that you made for uh, this that you, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, that's not what I want. Where is it? It is. You drag in the animations, uh, the thing you want to borrow the animation from. So this is the clean rod knight right here. And just for convenience's sake, drag in the player uh, anabine file and all these uh, HKX compendiums. These have all the actual animations inside them. And uh, except for these two, but don't worry about that. And then this has the tape files. Okay. So we're going to just get straight into it. We're targeting tutorial. Let's open the player. I'm going to click no game data directory. You just go to the game folder, press save, mod engine directory, press browse, um, mod engine, uh, retargeting tutorial, save. And another important thing that I need to remind you guys to do is to load the UXM unpacking files. So before you even do anything, you'll need to use UXM to unpack the original game files. Don't worry, it's not going to break your game. It just lets you see all the files you need to mess with the game. So click apply. Hello everyone, it's me from the future. Um, I just need to make a quick correction. When we're retargeting, we actually only need the player skeleton with the bones and not the animation that goes on the skeleton. So we're going to just open up the uh, anabine file for the player. I'm just opening a random one. Um, we go to tools, export skeleton and animation, select none. Click Habit 2010.2 Pat File X32 and click Skeleton. And then you need at least one animation for it to export properly. So just click any of them. And then you can use this browse option to find where you want to export them and click Start Export. And then I just go to File, Import. Mm, delete that. Import the skeleton. There she is. Looking pretty. Select all of it. 
open helper 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 manager. This is something you have to download, by the way. It's linked in the description below. Website looks like this, and you can find the file all, all the way at the bottom. Change bone size to 0 0.1. Preserve hierarchy. Click apply. Replace the bones. Look at those beautiful bones. Select everything. Go to file, export. It export as FBX, and it can be wherever you want it. Um, Again, this isn't the same project. Um, I'm just making a correction here. We're going to name it something like Player Skeleton. Save. Make sure your units are meters. Um, you want to be consistent with that. And everything else looks good, so OK. And then when we open Blender, ignore that mess. Oh my goodness. We'll just make a new project. Uh, you go to File, Import, FBX. Go look for that Player Skeleton FBX file. Export that. And it should look like this. So that's the only correction I need to make. Um, if you include the animation on the target's skeleton prior to retargeting, um, it can make some stuff kind of fucked up. Um, I didn't realize this until later. Um, luckily, Clever corrected me. And then this should be all you need to know. And we're going to resume with the rest of the video. So let's go back to Pass Me. So uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. we're done with this. So let's just click Open. Let's open the Clean Rod Night. I'm uh same directories here click apply and we're just going to pick something kind of random i'm not making this for myself it's just an example for you guys so 2000 is usually walking we don't really care about that let's find something that's like an attack uh let's skip ahead to 10,000? Nope, those are death animations. Let's try 6,000. Running. 7,000. Standing. Oh, here you go. Let's find something kind of flashy just so this is fun. Something different than the usual player animation. Just kind of browsing through all this, seeing what I might like. Lots of death animations. That one's pretty cool. I don't think that's a player animation yet. So 8001, 0030010. I mean, it's highlighted right here. You don't have to memorize that number or anything. Tools, exploit skeleton and animations. Make sure you have the directory right. Click on the second one, 2010, and select none. Open up this, uh, 3010. Uh, bu 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 right here and don't forget to export the skeleton too and start export I'm gonna delete that uh, bu 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 bu. Sorry, I just had to double check my audio files. Um, so yeah, once this is exported, you can close this and you can close this too. Let's just minimize this. We don't need Map Studio, so let's just close that. And the next part is when we start diving into the kind of tricky stuff. We're gonna open up 3ds Max. 
So there's one thing I want everybody to do before you do anything in 3ds Max, and that's go to Customize, Unit Setup, System Unit Setup, and make sure one unit is one meter, and press OK. OK. So we're going to, let's change the perspectives here. When you open up 3ds, it's going to look like this, which is a little overwhelming. So let's go to views, viewpoint configuration, layout. And we're going to change the top left to be a perspective view. We're going to change the layout to only have one view. And that way it's a little easier to understand. It's middle mouse to pan around the place and it's alt middle mouse to rotate. First things first, import, and you're going to need uh, the Habit plugin for this um, to be able to read HKX files. And like I said, if you need that stuff um, or if you need help with it, just send me a message. So let's go to Mod Engine, Retargeting Tutorial. Oh yeah, let's put these, we'll put these clean bot night things in their folder later, but for now, let's open up player, let's open up skeleton. You don't need to mess with any of this stuff. Let's import. And you'll see this little orange guy down here. One thing you'll also need to do Go to edit, sorry, go to customize, customize user interface. Go to toolbars. We're going to go to something called helper, something helper manager right here. Just drag it wherever you want it. It doesn't matter. It's just preference. And let's close that. Select everything here, click Helper Manager, and on the right hand side here we'll see the Helper Manager, turn down the bone size to 0 0.1, click Preserve Hierarchy, click Apply, click Replace with Bones, and now we have bones in our skeleton. Next, go to Animation and click Set a Skin Pose. Now we can add the actual animation right here. And if we click the little play button on the bottom, we'll see the vacuum slice that I'm doing. My animation is probably playing slower than yours just because I have it at half time speed. We can put it at one just so you guys kind of know what you're doing. So, next up, uh, Click this little button on the bottom that says time configuration and increase the frame count by one. We're doing this so we can set an A pose at the beginning of the animation. That way we can line up the skeletons prior to retargeting. You can press control A to select everything. And on the bottom here, oops, Select all these little keys and move it over just one frame, just like that. And go all the way back to the beginning. You can use, you can drag this to kind of move across the timeline. On the bottom right, click auto key. And then up here, go to animation and click a zoom skin pose. And you'll see down here on the bottom left, it just made a little key for us. And that's gonna help us a lot when it comes to retargeting. Now we go to file, export. Let's go back to that mod engine folder. And let's just call this 
player vacuum slice. And we're going to export it as autodesk.fbx. Now, we're not going to mess with anything here. Let's see. Make sure under units, the scale factors 1.0, scene units converted to meters. What else? Uh, that's it. It should be pretty straightforward. So click OK. That's exported. Put new, new all, don't save. Go to import. Now we're going to mess with the clean lot night stuff. Uh, let me just put that stuff in the folder where it belongs real quick. Right there. That way it's easier for you guys to kind of see what I'm doing. Go to the Clean Bot Knights animations. Click on the skeleton. We're going to import that. We're doing the same thing again. Make sure you do all this in order. Uh, motion Builder. I mean, Helper Manager. Crank this down to 0 0.1. Preserve Hierarchy. Apply. Replace the bones. Go to animation, set a skin pose, yes. File, import, import the actual animation. Uh, go to time configuration on the bottom. Increase the frame count by one. Click OK. Select everything. And let's move this all over by one frame. Just like that. Mm, I left that one over there. There you go. Make sure everything's moved over one frame. Now we're going to click Auto Key. Make sure this timeline thing is on the first frame. Go to Animation and Assume Skin Pose. Now, I'm going to go to File, Export, and call this Clean Light Spear Sweep. Save. Same thing here. Make sure the units are OK. Uh, and OK. Now we're done with 3DS. So just minimize it so you don't have to think about that for now. And we're going to open Blender. When it comes to Blender, to install the Vote Coco plugin, you'll download a zip file from that website. And all you have to do is drag that zip file onto the screen in Blender, and it'll install it for you. When you're in Blender, press N. That way you have Rococo on the side here. It might start with a few cubes and boxes. You can select them on the right here and just delete all that stuff. That way you have a blank slate. Press File, Import, FBX. Go to that Mod Engine folder. Retargeting tutorial. We're going to just import both of them at once. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Import. Now, this looks really confusing to you, I'm sure. Um, just don't worry too much yet. But I'm going to play it so you guys see what's going on here. This guy is the clean bot knight. We press space. You can see him do the sweep. You can kind of uh, let me crank this down. You can kind of see what he's doing. He's face down, by the way. This is facing the front of the guy. He's sweeping the spear. 
But just for consistency's sake, we're going to look at it from this perspective. Pause it. Let's uh, make that invisible. Let's look at the player and see what he's doing. Play. There's the vacuum slice. And luckily, they're pretty similar when it comes to the amount of frames. That'll make it easier to edit the tag and play around with that stuff. So, now, make them both visible. And we're going to scale down the clean lot night so it's closer to the size of the player. So, select it on the right here. Click scale on the left here. Don't click any of these colored things, just click the circle and shrink him down so he's roughly the size of the player. You might have to kind of mess with it because his foot position. Oh, let's go to the beginning where they're a posing. There we go, it's a lot easier to understand. You can see their feet at the bottom here. It's these little diamonds or whatever you want to call them. You can use those for reference. Let's get them pretty close. That's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. We're going to go to Vococo Studio Live on the right here. This little plugin. Click retarget, source, clean bot night, that's the first armature, target, second armature. And just click build bone list. Uncheck auto scale, remove master from this list, and click retarget animation. And then you can play it, see if it's kind of close. It looks like a mess, but it looks like it's real close. Let's look at just the player. Make sure his feet aren't like hovering or doing anything funky. Looks pretty good to me. It, there might be a little bit of hovering here, but uh, let me compare it to the Clean Bot Knight. Looks like the Clean Bot Knight's feet are a little closer to the ground. So let's try it again. Let's make both of them visible. Let's click on the player. Or actually, let's click on the clean bot knight. We're going to translate him down a little bit. And let's try retargeting one more time. The clean bot knight is now a little bit underground, but that doesn't matter too much because now the player is level with the ground. Um, let's drag the knight down a little more. We target one more time. Perfect. Now my feet are lined up. It won't look like I'm hovering or doing any kind of funky stuff. <sighs> So before you export, just to double check, there's a little button right here called Scene Properties. Click Units and make sure your units are metric and your unit scale is 1. Click the armature of your player, the one we're going to export, and go to File, Export, FBX. Let's find that uh, Mod Engine folder. Let's call it player. No, let's call it clean bot retargeted to player. You can call it whatever you want. I just name it these kind of things for clarity's sake. On the right here, limit to selected objects. Make sure your scale is 1.0. Uncheck space transform and check apply transform. Under Geometry, you should not have to mess with anything. Under Armature, uncheck Add Leaf Bones. Under Bake Animation, uncheck End All Lay Strips and Force Start End Key. And that should be it. I'm going to let this 
play on the screen for a little while just so you guys kind of can kind of look at it and copy it. Now click export FBX. Let's minimize this and go back to Autodesk. So here's the weird thing we have to do. We have to copy the root motion from the clean lot night. Root motion is something that tells the player where to move in the actual game world. If you just copy the animation, your player is going to do all the animation, the actual skeleton will, but it's not going to translate or rotate anywhere in the actual 3D game world. So it'll be useless. So let's go to File, New, New All, Don't Save, File, Import. Let's go back out. Let's, yeah, let's go to Clean Mod again, Import. Don't worry about the bone stuff this time. Just go to File, Import, Import the animation again. And make sure everything's deselected. Only select the master. You can look for it by clicking on the screen here, or you can just use this list right here. And go to Graph Editors, Curve Editor. And I have it dragged out at the 3DS Max just so I can get a bigger look at it. Um, but under Master, click Position. And then just so you can see where all the keys are, click View, Frame, Frame Value Extents. Basically, it's framing the largest extents of the key values. And you have, uh, let's see, just so you kind of see what's going on here, you have X, Y, Z, and W. Um, right now, we just see X, Y, and Z. X is red. I think Y is blue and Z, no, Z is blue and Y is green. Let's close that. Let's only click position, make sure that's the only thing selected. Click edit and copy. Now I'm going to go back to 3DS and click new, new all, don't save, file, import, import. Go back out here and select that file you exported from Blender. Clean lot retarget to player. This is really, really important. I cannot stress how important this is. Make sure you pick the latest retarget that you did. Make sure you leave its bones. And under units, make sure, this is weird, I know it's weird, but make sure final units are converted to meters and your scale factor is 0 0.01. It sounds like it's going to shrink it, but I promise you it's not. It's just some weird issue between Blender and 3DS where they don't directly translate scale factors when it comes to this. So make sure that's meters and that should be okay. And click OK. Your player, just to check if your scale's right, your player should be really skinny like this. And he, uh, he shouldn't have any bones. He shouldn't have a bunch of squiggly lines around him. If he has a bunch of squiggly lines around him, that's because you convert it to dummies instead of leaving it as bones. If your player has a bunch of really big polygons around him, that's probably because you forgot to uncheck add leaf bones in the blender settings. So we got this guy in here. We've made it this far, and now we're going to deselect everything. You can just click anywhere on the negative space over here and click Master. Click Graph Editors, Trap View Curve Editor. I have it on my other monitor here. And click Position under Transform. Click Edit and paste and then click instance and it should look 
like exactly the same. However, we don't care about X translation. That's just going to create some funky looking stuff. So pay attention closely. We're going to select everything here. Click view. Filters. And uncheck Y and Z. And click OK. So now the only thing we see is the X curve for the root motion. If you have an older version of 3DS, it'll be up here. If you have a newer one like me, it's going to be on the bottom left right here. And this lets you input the value for the keys. Just so you know, the keys are all these little white dots here, basically keyframes. We're going to click zero and click enter. And it should be a flat line like this. Actually, I'm sorry. One sec. Um, make sure before you input zero, make sure you click over here and deselect everything because it's still selecting X, Y, and Z. And then select just X. And input zero. And press enter. Sorry about that. If you want to double check if everything's okay, go to filters, re enable Y and Z, click OK, and you can see that Y and Z still have, uh, mainly uh, Z still has its curve. Cool, we're done with this. Click X. Let's get out of here. All right. And we're going to click play and just see what happens. And it's going to be weird. Just so you know. So my player is face down. And he's moving up. Which isn't right. There's an easy solution for this. Let's pause this again. Let's go to the beginning just so we see that A pose. Deselect everything. Select armature which is this cube right here and click this rotation button up here and rotate it 90 degrees exactly um the way to make that easier actually is go to here and click angle snap toggle that way it will snap to 90 degrees Rotate that armature. You'll notice I'm upside down. We're going to fix that real quick. Deselect that. Click master. And rotate the player back up. I know it's weird, but watch this. If I click play, now I'm moving the right way. However, if you look real close, You'll see my legs are kind of funky. It's just because they're not oriented correctly. Here's the next step. Under here, left foot target. You can. This is a lot more useful than using this visual part here. I prefer to use this. That way I can find everything correctly. So for left foot target two, Go to Animation, Constraints, Position Constraint, and Left Thigh. For Right Foot Target 2, go to Animation, Constraints, Position Constraints, Right Thigh. Go back to Left Target 2, Constraints, Orientation Constraint, Left Thigh. Go to right foot target 2, go to animation constraints, orientation constraints, right thigh. And then for target 1, left foot target 1, constraints, orientation constraints, left calf. For right foot target 1, go to animation constraints, orientation constraints, right calf. For right, I mean left foot target 0 or you know, just left foot target. Go to constraints, orientation constraints, and left foot. 
then for right foot target go to constraints orientation constraints right foot now select everything and press play again oh look at that my legs are normal I'm a human being again okay this is really really important under where it says armature here click that eye so it's not visible and deselect now press control a select everything make sure armature is not selected go to habit content tools export Create animations and make sure your frame range is one. It starts at one. That way we don't have that weird A pose at the beginning. That we are just using that A pose to retarget. And ends at whatever your you know final frame is. Uh let me double check what that is. Uh It's 107. It's this right here on this slider. Um, we go to Habit Content Tools, Export. And by the way, I'm going to send you the preset for this. Um, Witness has made that preset. Um, just make sure you change this and this. So under, we're going to end the animation at 107. Go to right to platform. This might say uh, AMD. It might say this, which is what I have under the 2018 uh, 3DS and Habit tools. Click that. Right to platform. This is where it's going to go. So let's click that little thing. Let's go back to our mod engine folder. This time we're going to go to the character folder and we're going to just export it right there. Uh, actually, go back to the player, go to the animation that we're going to replace. So copy that number, make sure it's the same number here. Then go to retargeting tutorial character and just save it right there. And when we're done, click Run Configuration. You might see some errors. You might see some warnings. I invite you to try using the animation first before you worry about these. Because usually they're pretty benign. To close this, let's save changes just so I can keep that. And I really recommend saving the project file, like the scene, and save it whatever you want. Uh, clean rot player. That way, if it doesn't look quite right, you can go back and uh, mess with the final steps. Minimize 3DS, and let's open uh, Explore. And let's go to Retargeting Tutorial, Character. And you'll see the animation that we exported is right here. So what we're going to do is, just so you know, uh, uh, all the things that are above A90 are going to be stored in here. Right click it, click Yabber, or you might have to drag it onto Yabber. It depends on if you registered it or not. Um, you just drag it onto the Yabber EXE and you get this little folder here. Let's open this in a new window. You kind of go all the way down the rabbit hole. I know it's a lot of folders and Drag that animation, that final animation that you exported into here. It'll ask if you want to replace it, click yes. You can close this mess, get out of here. 
go back to character right here. Let's repack it. You can use the Abbott to repack it. And that should be it. So we're going to check. We're going to open Animation Studio again. Okay. File, open. Same thing. We're opening the player animations, by the way. If you find that all your tastes are expanded, you can make it easier by just clicking edit and then collapse all taste sections. That way you can scroll through it a little faster. And it's uh, 668, right? Yeah. And then just press play. Wow, look at that. I believe it was 668. Let me double check for you guys. Uh, player, yep, 668. And now the Cleanbot Knights animation is on the player. However, this is just half the battle. I don't want to discourage you here. I should actually say you just got to mess with some things to get this to work better. Um, you can borrow, so you'll notice here in this timeline, there's a bunch of events. These are still the events for Vacuum Slice, just so you know. So all these things that it's doing to the game are for Vacuum Slice. We don't need this bullet because the CleanBot Knight attack doesn't have a bullet. And you can keep these FFXs if you want, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's get rid of these one shots, which are basically um, cosmetic effects. Let's get rid of these sounds because they're going to sound silly with the clean lot night thing. Delete all this. If you want, you can delete everything and start with a clean slate. But now we have a blank slate except for this thing called a uh, rumble cam. Let's also get rid of this stuff. Rumble cam is what's making the screen vibrate like that. And let's uh, let's add in a tap behavior. So we can borrow from something if we want to. So let's go look at this and borrow a very basic tap behavior. How about something from the Great Swords? A125. Or actually, let's borrow something from Spears. Let's do Clean Lot Spear, A203. Right here. That's a poke. We don't really want that. How about that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to borrow from that second swoop right here where it says invoke tap behavior and I'm going to press control C. I'm going to scroll back down to that animation we're working on. And let's put it right here. So we'll use the same attack behavior as the clean bot spear. Basically what that means is it'll do the same damage. You can really do whatever you want with that. You can pick other attacks. Um, you can kind of play around with that if you want. And now, if we go to Mod Engine, let's rename this configuration to Retargeting Tutorial. Oh, I don't know what just happened there. 
There you go. Save it. And let's uh let's launch Elden Ring. <laughs> 